building a new sector, seaweed. Rob Major from the Cawthron Institute. Rob is a marine ecologist who is passionate about improving the sustainability of and adding value to New Zealand's marine industries. His research focuses on sustainable fisheries technology, aquacultural, aqua, aquaculture spatial planning, and using bioeconomic and statistical modelling to assess the feasibility of innovative technology. If you want me to break that down for you lay people, come see me afterwards. He works closely with stakeholders to achieve their shared goals. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Major. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, my name is Rob Major. As Thank you for the introduction. I clearly need to rewrite my uh, website bio. Um, so I'm a marine ecologist here at Cawthorne at Institute, based down in Nelson. Um, and for the... Was up there already? Was up there already? Ah, there we go. Um, and so for the past three years, I've been working with this uh, team of people um, to help develop um, the seaweed sector here in New Zealand. Um, and so um, it's not just me down there. It's a really big team. Um, we've been working really close with Envirostrat, um, as well as the University of Waikato and Wakato Incorporated as well. So um, the mission that they gave us was to um, develop and test our framework for a sustainable, high-value uh, New Zealand seaweed sector that is focused on identifying a future for the sector based on ecosystem-based management principles. Um, so that was, what we, we, that was our initial sort of goal and what they would get, gave us. And the very first thing we did with that is we went and had a workshop in Nelson with the guys from Virostrat. Um, and because of how diverse our team was, we had very different questions and we interpreted this in very different ways. Um, and so part of our success, I think, was that in that initial workshop, we came up with a plan for how we were going to approach this mission um, and then how we, and what those outputs were going to look like at the end. So that's where sort of the, the, two, the diversity of the team was really important for us working together to get there. And one of those questions was, why seaweed? Um, seaweed's a really big industry uh, internationally. 35 million tonnes are produced globally. Uh, but 99% of that is farmed in Asia, done at really large scales. Um, this is the, has an estimated value of around 17 billion, and there's also a potential for this to align with our EBM, so ecosystem-based management principles. Um, but the key word there is potential. Um, and then for it to be able to, um, to work with that and for New Zealand to get the most value out of this, we actually need to make sure we do ha have a structured framework and approach forward so that we can achieve those goals alongside these economic goals as well. So New Zealand is a really good place to, to farm seaweed. And so we've got a very, diver very um, large diversity of seaweed species here. We have um, over 1,000, I think, was the last count. And it feels like every time we have a conversation around this, that number keeps growing. Of those, um, internationally, of the seaweeds that are harvested, it's only six or seven species. A lot of those are growing for biomass. So there really is uh, the opportunity in our diversity that we have here in New Zealand to, to take some, uh, do something slightly different, not try and compete at the commodity scale, try and aim for more high value um, approaches, to those approaches to seaweed. Um, and some of those high value options are here on the slide. So we've heard a lot about asparagopsis recently, uh, which is a, um, a red seaweed, which is potentially fed to ruminants to reduce their methane output. Uh, we also have our own, so there's a photo of Tom Wheeler there, he's going to speak soon, um, and Karengo, a native um, papyra, which is similar to nori, which is eaten on, on sushi. Um, and that's very, very high in protein. So because of these unique aspects that we have of our, of our seaweeds here in New Zealand, um, that's a really big opportunity for us. And again, by having a planned strategic approach going forward, it's how we, we can achieve those goals. So the work we did is the, um, the very first thing we decided is that we needed to figure out what was actually happening here in New Zealand and internationally. So we did a, these stock take reviews. These are all very large documents, 75 to 90 pages each. Um, I'm not sure many people read all of them. Um, but the first thing we did, we did a stock taking characterization of um, 
the sort of the market we have here. We're talking to people like Claire from Agracy, who we just met. Um, these businesses that had been involved in seaweed for a very long time in New Zealand. We also went and looked um, internationally to what people were doing overseas, where we thought those opportunities were for, um, for the New Zealand seaweed sector to focus on. Um, and also, uh, yeah, sort of how that market could look as we go forward. Um, we also did a stock taking characterization on the species that we have here in New Zealand, and we sort of we grouped um, the we grouped those species into sort of different categories that we thought are, that were the, the best opportunities for New Zealand to go forward in and to focus on. Um, and then we also did an environmental effects um, assessment of what seaweed aquaculture and the wild harvest of, of seaweeds looks like, and how we can minimise that um, to ensure that. Um, to ensure that we're not having an effect on the environment as we go through that. Um, also important in part of that first one, we had a big focus on the regulatory frameworks that exist here in New Zealand um, and how the seaweed industry can currently interact with, that, with those and what it should be doing going forward. So after we, um, we wrote these uh, reviews, um, we then reached out to a whole lot of different people. And over the past two and a half years, I'm sure a lot of people have received emails or phone calls from me or Sarian Adams or Nigel Bradley asking to be involved in these workshops um, so we can get as much feedback as we can um, before we go forward with that framework. Um, so you don't need to read everything that's on these slides. This is giving you an example of what those outputs were. So we had a, uh, a workshop on Māori partnerships. Uh, so we talked to, to leaders in, in the Māori aquaculture space and the seafood space. Talk to growers and manufacturers, so people like Claire again, um, current mussel farmers, people that want to get involved in this sector. We had a, a, a group of environmental researchers, um, and we had a group of pro, uh, we're talking to product researchers, people that are actually going to make these high-value products and understand how the processes work together. And then, again, and then lastly, we talked to the regulators. Uh, we talked to MPI and other government um, agencies and also to people that, that engage with those agencies a lot, so we could try and understand how, how we can make recommendations to them that could be useful. Um, and then from here, we, we, we built a, a draft framework. Um, so this is, a, this, is a, this is actually the final framework here, um, and there's a link to it, a link to it down there. I should have used a, a fancy QR code, but we'll get there. Um, so as part of our framework, we, um, we, we took that information we had and we gave that to six case study participants. So we talked to CH4 Global, we talked to Kelp Blue, we talked to Pacific Harvest, Premium Seas, to Final Upper Nui, and to Agracy. And the interesting thing about each of those case studies is they're all quite different. There are different um, levels in their, their sort of seaweed story and they've got different aspirations, they have different barriers and different required sector responses. So it was really interesting talking to all of those people and seeing where they were and where they were going. Um, so their feedback actually helped us improve that initial draft framework to w before we got to, to there. Um, and as part of the framework, um, we've got a regulatory lift out, which again talks to focuses on government. We've got a knowledge lift out, um, and we've got a leadership role to lift out as well for how we think these the framework can talk to these separate um, groups and organization so we can all go forward together on the same path. Just to give you a little snapshot, um, so this is the brief overview of the framework itself. Um, so we set a vision for how we thought the um, how we thought that the the sector would look um, in 2035. I think it is there, um, and that's something that we sort of agreed upon in that first well first in that first workshop we had, but then something we tested through the different other workshops and talking to different people. Um, and the way we see the, the sort of supply chain of seaweed working is how we have hatcheries going to, to farms and harvests and then manufacturers before being sold in, in sort of wholesale and retail. And you can see how the different um, aspects, environmental and research regulations, sort of feed in and out of, of the, that supply chain. And we think that New Zealand, by having a technology-led value extraction, that's where New Zealand's competitive um, advantage is. Um, so targeting niche markets there rather than doing big commodity scale competing with Asia, competing with that, that, those large international markets. Um, so we've, the, 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 uh, a lot of this, this work has been picked up and used quite regularly, quite heavily regularly uh, already. Uh, by the time we had finished our very first report, that we had a recommendation about a, um, establishing a sector voice. 
Um, and uh, we saw that as Anza, and like, well, I think we got lucky with this one because we had people like Claire and Anza that were already on that same path. So before we had that very first draft finalized, Anza was already established and they were working together, um, trying to sort of be on the same path that we were on with this. Um, and the goal is for ANZA to take ownership of that framework that we have developed, for them to host it on, on their website, for it to be reviewed, so it keeps getting used going forward. It's not just another document that sits there somewhere. Um, and as part of that, we had a Seaweed Summit um, October last year, which was also ANZA's um, first AGM. And we had over, we did it after the aquaculture um, uh, conference down in Nelson. We still had over 100 people show up at the end of the week. Um, a lot of them weren't already engaged in the agriculture sector. Some people came especially to Nelson just for that uh, summer, so that was fantastic. So you can see there's a lot of energy in that room there. Um, and that led to uh, a lot of media coverage, um, the few things we pulled out of that. Um, and one of those things uh, was that of all the Sustainable Seas research um, that was published on the website over the last years, that are top 10, eight of them were all of our seaweed. Um, our seaweed outputs, so I was quite smug when I saw that. Um, I think a lot of that just comes down to the, the interest that people have in the space at the moment. We worked really closely with designers, with Robin Wilkinson from the Challenge Leadership Team on communications to ensure we were, we were pitching everything um, at the right level. Um, but beyond that, we've also had some, some broader impacts of the research. Um, and I don't take claim for any of these things. Um, but there's lots of industry-led re uh, research projects that are going on at the moment. The photo you see there is, is from EnviroStrat, and they've been working with Green Wave New Zealand, um, Agri-C again, University of Waikato, to, and they've actually gone out and, and put out um, lines of, uh, of seaweed spat um, in, in the Coromandel with Lucas Evans. So that's a massive step forward. That's been the first step is to get some seaweed aquaculture in the water, get some biomass growing. So that's fantastic. Um, there's, there's also been lots of government support and recognition for the sector recently. Um, huge amounts of government investment through SFFF um, into, um, into seaweed research, which, is, which shows how engaged they are there, and hopefully the, the impact of the framework and the work that we have done has helped sort of encourage that and support that government investment. Um, our case study uh, participants are still, still operating, which is really good to see. It's a great sector. These guys are still... Um, still doing really well, and hopefully the process working with us and the framework has helped them as well. Uh, one of the, the participants, uh, Kelp Blue, were actually left New Zealand and then decided to come back and work in New Zealand again as the sector here has progressed. So I think that's great. Um, and then also my day job as a, as a consultant, we're starting to see more and more applications from, um, from farmers to, to have their water space be consented for seaweed. There's lots of mussel farming lines out there that aren't currently being used, and a lot of those farmers see seaweed as an opportunity there for them to, um, to change their, their consent and get some of these seaweed species on there so they can take advantage of this opportunity. I'm running ahead of time, which is a change. Um, but I'd like to acknowledge everybody um, that, that we talked to over the years. Uh, we had a really uh, uh, lots of support from our project advisory group. So there's Chris Kamara Inslee, uh, Dave Taylor, Andy Elliott, and Paul Creswell. Um, and then all the people that were engaged with us as part of those um, as part of those workshops and talked to us. Um, so thank you for, for answering phone calls and being on workshops um, and answering emails. Um, and a lot of our outputs were designed by, by Kirsten Ravel, and that's Ravel design there. Um, and again, Robin Wilkinson um, helped us a lot with the communications over the years. So thank you very much. <laughs>